Hi, welcome back. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about factory. Uh, so I'm going to create a whole series of videos to talk about lots of different kinds of factoring. Today's video is working on factoring quadratic equations, and I'm going to specifically teach you how to use the X method. Okay, so why factor? When does one have to factor? Uh, factoring shows up cross category. You first learn how to do it in algebra when you're trying to find the solutions to a quadratic equation. You encounter it some more in coordinate geometry when you want to find the zeros to graph your quadratic equation or your parabola. You then go on to use it in pre-calculus when you're graphing rational equations and you want to learn more about your domain and range or your asymptotes. If those words don't mean anything to you yet, don't stress. Um, but today's video is a how-to. So how do you factor a quadratic equation? What does it factoring mean? It means breaking it down from its quadratic form, x squared term, x term, constant term, into multiplication of two binomial terms. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see what I'm drawing. Okay, and here we are. So today we're going to work with this quadratic equation x squared minus 10x plus 24. And we're trying to break it down into two binomials that are multiplied together. All right, so first, we know that the first term in each of our binomials is going to be an x because we see from our x squared term that the first part of our FOIL, right, firsts is going to need to yield an x squared. So that's going to be an x times an x. And now we're going to use the x method to figure out what our next two terms are. All right, so here, I'm going to just draw an x right beneath the problem. And the way we use the x method is as follows. In the top quadrant of our x, we do the coefficient of our x squared term times our constant term. So our coefficient here is just a 1 because we don't see it. So that means there's an implied 1 there. And our constant term is a 24. 1 times 24 is 24. So that goes up here. And what goes down here is our middle term. And we include our sign. So minus 10x means that negative 10 is the coefficient of our middle term. And what we're asking ourselves to fill in these two terms is what multiplies to the top and adds to the bottom. And it can sometimes be helpful to do a little factor list over here. So what are things that multiply to 24? Well, 1 and 24, just say minus, multiplies to 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4, and six, that pretty much covers it. Okay, so of these guys, which one has the potential to come together to get us a 10? Well, four and six do. And we need them to come together to be a negative 10. So that means they need to be a negative four and a negative six, right? Minus four plus minus six adds to negative 10. And now let's check to see, does it multiply to 24? Minus 4 times minus 6 does multiply to be positive 24. And so these two numbers are what finish up our work right here. So x minus 4 and x minus 6 are our factored form of this. And we can do a quick FOIL to make sure that we're right. So again, FOIL firsts x times x is x squared, outsides, x times minus 6 is minus 6x, insides, minus 4 times x is minus 4x, and lasts, minus 4 times minus 4 is positive 24. Combine our like terms, and we end up with x squared minus 10x plus 24, and there we go. All right, let's do it again. There's our next equation. Okay. Here's our x. All right. 
what multiplies to 1 times minus 18, that's negative 18 on the top, and adds to, there's our negative 3. Okay, let's make our factor list. We've got 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, and that'll do it. All right, so there's no way that a 1 and an 18 are going to come together to be a minus 3, right? Our options would be a 19 or a 17. 2 and 9, same thing. We could make a 7 or an 11. 3 and 6, though, that's potential. We could make a 9 or we could make a 3. So 3 and 6. Now, we need it to be a minus 3 by the time we finish adding. That means our bigger number is the one that has the negative attached to it, right? Minus 6 plus 3 is what comes together to be a minus 3. If we'd reversed this, we would have ended up with a plus 3. That's not what we need. So there we go. That means our factors are x plus 3, x minus 6. And let's do a quick FOIL to make sure we were right. x squared minus 6x plus 3x minus 18 combine like terms x squared minus 3x minus 18. Yup. Okay, now, so far, we have been doing problems where our x squared term has a coefficient of 1. But this method also works when our x squared term has a coefficient of more than 1. Okay, so here's our next equation. 2x squared plus 11x minus 6. And this time we can see our x squared has a coefficient, but we can still use the x method. We just need to do some factoring by grouping at the end. Okay, so again, we start. What goes up top? Our coefficient of our x squared times our constant. So 2 times negative 6, that's negative 12. And what goes down here is the coefficient of our middle term. Okay, we make our factor list again over here. We have 1 and 12. We have 2 and 6. We have 3 and 4. Okay, which two have the possibility to come together to be an 11? That would be our 1 and our 12. And now we say, all right, I need it to add to a positive 11. That means our 1 has to be negative. Okay, so far, just the same, but here's where everything differs. Because we have a coefficient of our x squared, these are not the answers to what go inside the parentheses because we no longer just have inside those parentheses an x and an x as our leading term. Those will not multiply to be a 2x. So here's where we go from here. When we did our work over here, you can see that the answers we came up with here are actually the coefficients of our middle terms when we do a FOIL. So that's how we use them right now. We grab what we know will be our firsts, right? Our firsts will be that 2x squared. Now, our insides and outsides are going to be these. So that's minus x and plus 12x. And then our lasts are still going to end up being this, right? Because here's our firsts, here's our lasts, and here's our combined inside outside. So we're just separating them here. And now we go ahead and we do our grouping. So if you have not watched my video factoring by grouping, go ahead and pause here, go watch it and come back. And I'm going to now proceed. So I went ahead and I grouped. These first terms are one group. These second terms are another group. And factoring by grouping, I asked myself, what is the greatest common factor to this group? That would be an X. So I factor it out. That means division. 2X squared divided by X leaves me with 2X. Minus x divided by x leaves me with minus 1. Okay, what is the greatest common term to 12x and minus 6? That'll be a 6. 
okay? What is left out of 12x when I factor out a six? That'd be two X. What's left from minus six when I factor out a six? That'd be minus one. Okay, here's our check. Are these two things the same? Yes, they are. Factor those out of both terms, two X minus one. And what's left in this term when I factor out that one? An X. And what's left in this term when I factor out that one? A plus six. And now, I have completed my factoring. 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 factors into 2x minus 1 times x plus 6. All right. So there we have it. That's three different examples of factoring using the x method. All right. There's another factoring video on my um, channel called Factoring by Grouping. Check that out. And then stay tuned for future. We're going to do difference of squares. We're going to do difference of cubes. And we're going to do greatest common factor. All right. Uh, keep mathing. And if you've got any topics that you'd like me to do a video on, go ahead and pop those into the comments and then stay tuned.